Hey guys, that's Education here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at an introduction to post-processing inside of the engine. So we're going to be going over exactly what post-processing is, what you can do with it, and finally we're going to be showing you how to get the volume into your scene and uh, start playing around with some of the settings and get the effects and the look that you want. So let's start off by going ahead and showing you uh, some post processing examples to show you exactly what uh, post-processing does. So if you take a quick look at some of these images you can see here, you can see that the colors really change, uh, you can really add life and a bit of style to uh, your to your image, your scene, and in this case we're going to be doing it to the game. So if you take a quick look at my scene real here, quick here, so if I go into this volume you can see it goes red, we got a bit of uh, blur, or if we go underwater you can see it goes blue. Um, but it really allows us to add contrast, just add a little bit more life, just change the colors around and all of that good stuff. So I did touch on post-processing a little bit in the previous uh, tutorial, but today I want to go over, uh, you know, I want to focus on it properly and get you a good foundation into post-processing. So now we know what it does, what you can do, let's go ahead and get started with uh, how you can actually create a post-processing volume. So a post-processing volume is a three-dimensional area, like I showed in the previous, ep previous episode, and whenever the camera is in that area, it's going to take all of the properties from that volume and adjust your camera accordingly. So if I click on this volume here real quick, and if I go down to scene color, you can see I've given it a bit of an orange. So when I go into this volume, it's going to make the scene a little bit more orange. And that's how the volume works, basically. And as you go in and out, it sort of transitions uh, between that. So let's go ahead and uh, create the volume. So to do that, just go over to uh, the modes up here. Just go to all classes and then all volumes and just type in post processing volume if you can't see it already. So once you've got that, just click and drag it into your scene just like that. Now we can manipulate and transform this uh, however you want to. Um, like I said, just put it wherever you want the uh, the colors to change and everything. So uh, keep in mind, it's only going to change while you're inside of that box. So if you was to do it for water, you would put the uh, the, vol uh, the volume covering the area underneath the water, wherever the camera is going to be, and it's going to stop as soon as you get out. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over this little red blood patch that I have on the ground here. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger this way. And don't forget you can rotate and scale this, do whatever you gotta do. So now we got our volume, but when we go inside it, nothing happens. So let's start off by uh, going over some of the settings real quick. So I'm just gonna be showing you the basic settings to give you uh, sort of a foundation and a start into post-processing. So let's start off by going over the film. This is probably the most important bit. So if I click on that in the post-process volume settings, you're probably gonna have to expand settings here and then go to film and we can play around with a few things so first things first let's check uh, check tint and then when we go inside of that if we click this little white bit here or whatever color it is for you and then if we start playing around with the color in here you can see that our scene then adjusts accordingly so you can see it going from this dirty bright orange to this light blue the red, whatever you want. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a red now just to go with the blood, nothing too fancy. Only a little bit, you don't want to make it too strong otherwise it's going to make it really unrealistic and that's not what you want, so just a, tight, uh, a tiny little touch of red. And if I press OK and go out of it, you can see the red goes as I go in and out of this volume. Now, you can also tint the shadows, you're not going to be able to see this very much but you can do it if you check tint shadow click it and then play around with the colors, you can also see that the shadows of the other objects, they also change ever so slightly. If you have a strong color like red, you're not going to be able to see it, but it is going to do it. So I'm just going to set this to a light blue for now. There was a few other settings I wanted to play around with. Saturation. Uh, so saturation is essentially the color, uh, how much color you're going to have. So if you have uh, zero color, it's going to be black and white, just like this. Uh, and if you have two, it's going to be 
crazy free for just play around with it but really you're only going to be going between probably about zero and two so i'm going to go for this sort of old school look which i like 0.1 we've got this tint already which is going to go on top of the saturation so we have a tiny little bit of this little red if i wanted to i can make that a blue or whatever i want to really just play around with it see what you can do and lastly under film we've got contrast uh, this is the only other really important one uh, you can see exactly what it does just adds more or less contrast it's very hard for me to explain it but just take a look at what it does and uh, you should be able to figure out how that works so I'm gonna quickly turn all of this stuff off real quick I'm going to set this, there we go, and I'm going to go down to the next bit. The next bit being scene color. There's a few things I want to show you in here. So first and foremost, we've got the scene color, which is essentially going to globally change the color of everything in your scene to whatever color you choose. If I want to give it a little bit of blue, I would give it a little, blue, a little bit of blue just like that. That's pretty much how that works, very simple. And then we've got this fringe intensity and saturation. It sort of gives it that little offset, the blue and the red, the almost 3D effect. Um, you're probably not going to use that much, maybe if you're underwater, uh, or if, yeah. I'm not going to bother explaining it in too much detail, but that's basically what it does. The next one's really cool. This is the vignette intensity, and this is essentially a vignette, really. You know the little black border you get around the screen? So let me just show you how that looks. You see how it goes dark around the screen there? That's what the vignette does. And it's really powerful. It helps immerse the player in the scene, which is great. Uh, so you might want to use those. Maybe not all the time, or if you do, you might want to set it relatively low to something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's really great in horror games. So, you know, play around with that, see what you can do. So there's a few light, uh, like bloom and light lens flare settings that I want to go over now. So if I wanted to, I could turn up the bloom. And it's kind of hard to explain what bloom is, but it's essentially like uh, the light from the emissives and the sun and stuff like that. It's not like actual light, it's just like this fake light that comes on around it. It's hard to describe, but just look what happens as I turn the bloom up and down sort of works like that and then you can tint the bloom if you want to you can even add a dirt mask and all that good stuff but i'm not really going to go into that for now so the next bit i wanted to go over is lens flares lens flares pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory really uh, allows you to add crazy lens flares you know like the jj abrams films bit like this you can turn the intensity up if you want them stronger lens flares turn them down if you don't want it and you can even tint them if you want to so if i turn on tint and then I can change the colors of those accordingly. There is lots of stuff you can do for post-processing. I've given you a very simple look um, into it. There is so much you can do. You can really add uh, life and contrast into your scene. You know, like I showed you from this deep red to, you know, the underwater blues and all of that stuff. So play around with post-processing. See what you can do. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.